Hi everybody, my name is Ben, and today we have a fun comparison to go through. We got the 2016 MacBook Pro here on the left, and the M1 2020 MacBook Pro on the right. And of course, from what you see right off the bat, these are incredibly similar machines. They even have a similar screen brightness and almost identical design. Um, but at the end of the day, they're incredibly different devices because of what's inside of them. So let's jump right into it and just look at what's different about these two machines. Now, right off the bat, you can see that the M1 MacBook Pro on the right is slightly thicker than the 2016 MacBook Pro on the left. And that's because they did change the actual case design on the M1 MacBook Pro. Um, and that happened in 2020, actually, with the i5 release of the 2020 MacBook Pro. Now, outside of that, of course, the biggest difference that you'll see here has to be the key size. The keyboards are different. You got the butterfly keyboard on the 2016 MacBook Pro. That's a lot louder. You can hear that here. While the 2020 MacBook Pro has the scissor switch keys, which are a lot quieter. It's just a better sound. So that is actually something to consider with, with these two machines is that people will be able to hear you with the 2016 MacBook Pro. That keyboard is kind of annoying with some time. And I'm actually super aware of of what my roommates think about me when I'm typing on there late at night because it really is kind of a clacky and annoying sound to it with that keyboard. Now, going on to the actual screen here, of course, 13.3 inches on both of them. They're both retina displays with the same pixel density. Um, the background I have on them is slightly different time of day, so we'll get the same background there so we can compare the actual colors of the displays. Um, and you can see, just from what you have here, I have the, both the displays on the same color profile, but they look essentially the same. Let's make sure the brightness is maxed out on both of them, but they're essentially identical panels. So you're not gonna notice much difference there in terms of screen quality. What you are gonna notice though, is with performance. So I'll show you real quick, just the specs of both of these machines. Um, on the right hand side, of course, is the M1. And here on the left, we have the 2016 one with a dual core i5. Both of them have eight gigabytes of RAM, so there's no difference there with that. But let's just open up a few applications and just get a sense for how the performance compares on both of these machines. So first, let's just open up Safari on both of them and we'll see how quickly that comes up. Three, two, one. So right off the bat, the M1 is definitely quicker but the 2016 is really not that far behind. Let's open up a little bit heavier of an app. Let's do RStudio on both of them. Okay, three, two, one. And I imagine the M1 is gonna show its performance a little bit more. So the M1 came right up and it had what I was working on up there as well. Um, let's open up also the App Store. I imagine that'll be a bigger app as well to compare. And again, super quick, um, but the M1 does edge out the 2016 MacBook Pro. Lastly, let's just open up maybe something a little bit bigger. Um, let's do, what do we got on here? Let's do PowerPoint. Three, two, one. Okay, and on the M1, it came right up. While on the 2016, we are still loading it. So with some of those bigger apps, you're definitely going to notice the difference in performance between the M1 and the 2016 MacBook Pro. And that is probably the biggest difference at hand here outside of the battery life. Now, the battery life on the M1 is really something else entirely. It's really hard to kill the M1. <laughs> um, I think I've gone through multiple days with the M1 MacBook Pro that I've taken off the charger at 80% and gone through an entire day of schoolwork. And the lowest I've ever got to go is about 40%. Now with the 2016 though, you're gonna be fighting with it. It's gonna be hard to make it through an entire day without plugging in at some point. So this, and to believe it or not, this 2016 actually has less battery cycles on it than my M1 MacBook Pro. So it's not a matter of how many battery cycles it has. It's a matter of the efficiency of these two platforms. Um, outside of that, I think these are incredibly 
similar machines. Um, just for the heck of it, I'm going to open the photo booth and compare the camera quality on them. Um, we'll get that on both of them and just see okay what I look like filming bo on both of these. Now, it's going to be really hard to tell from here, but if you look at the 2016, there is more noise on there than on the M1. And that is because of just the processing that the M1 is able to do. There's a lot more overhead with the M1 chip that allows it to um, make a little bit better of a picture, even though it is essentially the same, the same camera, the same uh, thing going on there. So uh, overall, I think, you know, there's not, there's obviously a huge difference between both of these computers. And it's obvious that the M1 is the better machine in 2023 but at the end of the day if you still have a 2016 or 2017 to 18 macbook pro and you haven't had issues yet with your keyboard you're in a pretty good place it's a pretty awesome computer and it's a real shame that in spite of it being such a good performer in 2023 this thing is no longer receiving any updates it's permanently stuck on mac os monterey so that is a huge shame about this machine is, you know, it's stuck for the rest of its time. You can definitely hack a newer OS on there, but it's just not ever going to have that level of support that it deserves. Um, so that's just a quick little comparison between these two machines. I hope you all enjoyed it, and please let me know below uh, what you all think and how you're doing with your MacBook right now. I appreciate it. Have a good one.